The makers of Campbell Soups present The Campbell Playhouse, Orson Welles, producer. Good evening, this is Orson Welles. Hollywood is where the movies come from. And relevant to tonight's broadcast, nobody's had more fun poking fun at Hollywood than George Kaufman. I have reference not only to Merton of the movies and Once in a Lifetime, but also to the whole legend of things George Kaufman has said about the movies. I Lost My Girlish Laughter is the name of tonight's broadcast, and it's a bestseller which it deserves to be. And tonight, besides Mr. Kaufman... Other guests on the Campbell Playhouse are Ilka Chase, who has been very important in the Animal Kingdom, The Women, and a dozen other Broadway hits, and Tamara Java, who is a graduate of Ziegfeld's Whoopi, Gordon's Three's a Crowd, Wyman's On Your Toes, and just last season, the extremely successful London production of Idiot's Delight. There's also Frank Reddick, Agnes Moorhead, Myron McCormick, Ray Collins, and finally, our author herself. But just now, I'd like you to hear a word from Ernest Chappell. Each Friday evening since the new Campbell Playhouse broadcast began I've been talking to you about Campbell's Chicken Soup Tonight I want to tell you some things about the most popular soup in all the world Campbell's Tomato Soup Year by year, day in and day out This one soup is served more often than any other If you and I could sweep across the country Looking in at dining room windows any noon or any night we'd see again and again people drawing up their chairs to bright, steaming plates of Campbell's tomato soup. These are facts. You can check them with your own grocer and among your friends. Why is this one soup so often eaten by so many people? One reason is that mothers like to serve it to their families, particularly their children, because it provides the nourishment of fresh, sun-ripened tomatoes. Then people are captivated by its inviting color and its delightful smoothness. But the reason most folks like to have it is its flavor. It's a magic flavor created by an exclusive recipe of superb, luscious tomatoes, fine table butter, and delicate seasoning. People say the flavor of Campbell's tomato soup cannot be matched, and indeed it has something about it that folks never tire of, that young and old enjoy again and again each time it's served, each spoonful they sip. Are you at your house enjoying Campbell's tomato soup often these days? And now for tonight's story. Orson Welles, in his own radio arrangement of the bestseller, I Lost My Girlish Laughter, with Ilka Chase, Tamara Jeeva, and the distinguished American playwright George Kaufman, making his debut on the air tonight as an actor. Good evening, Mr. Tussler. Take your coat, Mr. Tussler. How are you feeling tonight, Mr. Tussler? Oh, fine, thanks, fine. Say, has Mr. Anders come in yet? I didn't see him, Mr. Tussler. Jim, have you seen Mr. Anders tonight? No, I haven't seen him yet, Mr. Tussler. Oh, say, what time is it, Jimmy? It's 20 to 12, Mr. Tussler. Oh, you mind if I turn on your radio, Jimmy? There's something I want to catch. You sure can, Mr. Tussler. In one of the most spectacular openings of the season. And so, it's another smash hit for Sidney Brand of Super Hill. As Man of the Beach stood up cheering in the aisles of the Carthay Circle in Hollywood tonight. Oh, that's something about and a movie. And right here on 52nd Street, New York City. Ah, the that's first better. dramatic hit of the season open tonight at the Theatre Guild. Oh, that's your play, Mr. Tussler. Tussler, and Bruce Anders, leading man of the play, Citizen Asylum. Which sets a Good. new high. I think they liked it all right. Thanks. Well, Hello, congratulations, congratulations, Mr. Tussler. Johnny. Thank you, Agnes. Yeah, Thank sir. you. Good work, John. That's right. And hamburger 21, right please. Away, Mr. Tussler. Oh, uh, hey, Tussler. Leland, I thought you were in Hollywood. Yeah, I flew in this morning. Well, you did it again, John. This is the best play you've ever written. I'm glad you liked it, Leland. Oh, John, I want you to meet Sawyer Tarn. Sawyer, this is John Tussler. He wrote the play we saw tonight. How do you do, Mr. Tarn? How do you do? Sawyer's flying to Hollywood in the morning. I've just signed her with Sidney Brand. Well, ever been in pictures before? For Miss Brandt? Oh, yes. I have worked with the finer directors, Kropofsky, Schneiderman, Plum. Hello, Mr. Oh, Tussler. Anders, well, won't you join us? Thanks. Anders, I want you to meet Miss Saria Tarn. How do you do? And uh, Leland Hayward, you know Leland. Oh, I saw you in the play tonight, Anders. Fine performance. Better hold on to him, John. Hollywood's crazy with a leading man. How, uh, how about lunch sometime? Well, I'd be delighted to see you. How about you, John? 
Sure. When are you going to give up? You mean go to Hollywood? Sure. Man? Oh, no. I'd rather stay here and work on my own stuff. You know, they might buy centers in asylum. You can't tell. Then you could work on your own stuff out there. No, no, it's not that kind of a play, Leland. It's no plot for a picture. Ah, uh, what do you know about it? There ought to be a story in it somewhere. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'm calling Sidney Brand in the morning. I'll tell him all about it. All right. Now, come on, Sarge. We better be going. We've got to get up early and catch that plane. Goodbye, Mr. Anders. See you soon. Goodbye. Goodbye, Mr. Tom. Good luck. Thank you. Goodbye, Leland. Jimmy, will you get my car? Yes, Mr. Hayward. Right away, Mr. Hayward. Well, there they go, off for the west. You're next, no, Anders. Not me? Yes, there's nobody left in New York now. What? They've torn down the 6th Avenue well. The subway is going next week. Why, look at this place. Empty. Yeah. Hey, say, can I get a call for God's sake? Research Detective department. Rome, Mr. Brand will look at those gal of the plane's rushes at 11 o'clock. Research Madam department. Uh, Mr. Brand thinks he left his pills on the table this morning. Please send them up to the office immediately. Research Property department. department. Mr. Brand will look at the pencils for front page kid at 11.25. Research well, department. Baby department, please. Hello. Uh, this is Mr. Brand's secretary speaking. Will you send samples of bassinets and nursery wallpaper out to Mrs. Brand's residence, please? What's that? Yes, yes, most any day now. Research department calling for Mr. Brand. Check on jokes to be used in Russian barbershop before the revolution. Super Film Studios, good morning. I'm sorry Mr. Brand can't be disturbed. He's in conference. Now then, boys, everybody here? Everybody here, Mr. Brand. Thanks, Roy. Boys, Super Films is about to embark on the most important picture in its history. You're just the man to do it, Mr. Brand. Thanks, Roy. And it's my single privilege to announce to you that Super Films has just signed a five-year contract with Europe's most glamorous actress, Sarya Tan. Boss, that's terrific. Thanks, Roy. Palmer, Miss Tan's American debut must be the most significant event in the history of motion pictures. It must be the most exciting event in the history of motion pictures. Also profitable. Palmer, I sent you a message to find writers for Miss Tan. Where are they? I don't see them. But, Mr. Brand. What about stories? Why are the New York office suggestions? That's a great idea, Thanks, boss. Roy. And what about the new Theater Guild play, Palmer? I hear Metro and Warner's are bidding heavily for it. I haven't heard there was a Theater Guild play, but I've got a scenario department. Look, What's that Mr. for? Mr. Brand, I sent you a copy of that play six weeks ago, Sinners in Asylum. Oh, yes, remember? I remember. Get me a copy of that play. Uh, what's the name of it? Uh, it's called Sinners in Asylum, Sinners Mr. Brand. Then. What's that red bound script under your telephone there? Oh, this uh, sin is this sin. Oh, it's quite a play, quite a play, Roy. Yes, boss. Call up our New York office and authorize them to offer the Theater Guild one hundred thousand dollars for sinners in asylum. Tell them to get it at once. Right, boss. And a thousand a week for the author. That's plenty. It sure is, boss. Thanks, Roy. All right, boys. That's all for this morning. We'll pick it again after lunch. Right after lunch, boss. Thanks, Roy. Make that call right away. Sure thing, boss. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Brand's office. Miss Lawrence speaking. One moment, please. It's New York office calling, Mr. Brand. Uh, hello, Francis. Why don't you get that play for me? What? What's that? They turned us down there. What? The robbers. Who's the agent? Leland Hayward, huh? I might have known him. Well, how much do you want? Two, two, two hundred thousand. Two thousand a week for the author, the robber. Close the deal. Two hundred thousand and two hundred a week for the author. I mean two thousand. Two hundred thousand dollars for a stage play and two thousand. Can you imagine that? Well, let's get back to work. Check with the costume department. The costumes on Love Is All. Yes, Mr. Brand. Oh, Mr. Brand. Yeah, what is it, Madge? Shall I notify Palmer about Sinners in Asylum? What Sinners in Asylum? Well, that's the picture you're producing, Mr. Brand. You just bought it for two hundred thousand dollars. Oh, yes, that's right. All right, uh, check with Palmer on the banner line, the transcript. Sire Tan's American debut in this season's greatest play, Sinners in Asylum, by America's outstanding playwright, uh, America's outstanding playwright... Uh, Tussler, uh, Mr. Brand. Uh, John uh, Tussler. Uh, Tussler. Flash! A wise West Coast movie biggie is having trouble a plenty with the Hayes office because of vital changes they demand in a play that cost him $200,000. The rumor is that he's doing a burn because he didn't take time out to read it first. Flash! The Hayes office and Sidney Brand of Super Films have kissed and made up. The heroine of Sinners in Asylum is being changed to Spanish. Sidney Brand, Super Films, Hollywood, California. What do you mean you're making her Spanish? Stop. The whole point of the play will be lost. Stop. We'll not be party to any such low commercialism. Stop. My play goes on as is or else. Signed, John Tussler. My goodness. John Tussler, Theater Guild, New York City. For 2,000 weekly, you should be willing, sir, Paul Barris, your own funeral. Stop. 
expect you soon. Stop. Is it my fault if Hayes' office won't let me be artistic? Stop. Best wishes. Sign, Sidney Brand. <clears throat> yes? Is, uh, is this Mr. Brand's office? Yes. I, uh, I wonder if I could see Mr. Brand. Well, I'm sorry. Mr. Brand is in conference. Oh, well, uh, should I wait, do you think? Well, I, I wouldn't if I were you. Thank you. Uh, would you mind very much telling me your name? No, I wouldn't mind. Uh, my name is Tussler, John Tussler. Oh, well, I'm so sorry. I'll tell Mr. Brand you're here. Well, do you think he'll be glad? Yes, what is it? Mr. Tussler's here, Mr. Brand. Tussler, Tussler, Tussler. No yes, Mr. Uh, Brand. I can't see him. I'm in conference. Mr. Brand. Yes, what is it? Mr. Tussler is the author of Sinners in Asylum. Well, why'd you say so? Send him in. Send... You can go right in, Mr. Tussler. Thank you. Good luck. You think I'll need it? Mr. Tussler? Yes, this in is Mr. Here. Tussler. Thank you. Mr. Tussler? Yes, I am. Mr. Tussler? I'm looking for a... Mr. Tussler? I had an this appointment. Way. I beg your pardon. I'm looking... Oh, Tussler. Glad to have you with us, Tussler. Did you have a nice trip out? Uh, what yes, it was very nice. It was very... Uh, I say no, I had a very I'm, uh, nice trip. I'm speaking to Roy here. I beg your pardon. Roy. Yeah, Chief. Oh, Tussler, yeah. Uh, we're going to do big things for this play of yours, Tussler. It'll cost a million dollars before you can get on the set. And what a cast I'm giving you. Saryatan, Europe's most glamorous star, Tussler. And I'm working on a deal for Tyrone Power. Tyrone Power? Gee, Chief, he'll be perfect. Thanks, Roy. Boys, this is Mr. Tussler. Tussler, meet Mr. Fay. He's going to direct your picture. His picture? Well, he wrote the play, you know. Oh, he wrote the play. Uh, Tussler meets Skinner. He's uh, doing the adaptation of your play. Skinner. How are you? Uh, I'm pretty well, thank you, except and for a slight touch of uh, the this is Roy, my brother-in-law. He's my assistant. Oh, very happy to meet you, Mr. Tussler. All right, now let's get down to business. Now, boys, the important thing is to stick as close as possible to the original play. After all, there are a lot of people in New York who paid good money to see this play, so it must have something. But, of course, we have to remember the Hayes office. Now, I gave them my solemn word of honor that when they saw my script, it'd be in my usual good taste, finesse, and delicacy. They said to me, okay, Brand, we trust you to do the right thing. Now, boys, I can't let them down. Yeah, and, you know uh, us, Chief. We never let you down uh, yet. Thanks, Roy. And, Roy, be sure to get down every word we say. It's very important. Yeah, okay, boy. Of course, we're changing the theme of the play. Uh, you understand that, don't you, Tussler? Well, uh, Mr. Brandt. Uh, yes, Tussler? I uh, just, uh, well, let it go. It's not well, important. Now, don't be Tussler. bashful, Tussler. We're all a big family here. Uh, now, Skinner. Yes, boss. Uh, we're paying Tussler a fortune to write this adaptation. All right, so he's one of the three greatest American playwrights. But has he ever written for the screen? No. What are his screen credits? None. But you, Skinner, you know what it's all about, and I'm depending on you for the finest screenplay of the year. You never know. We might even win the Academy Award. You're two for one, Chief. That was a rotten deal you got last year. You're right. Thank you, Roy. Roy, you're sure you're getting everything down? Oh, yes, Chief. Every word. Good. Now, Skinner, this is yes. just a suggestion, but bear it in mind while you're writing. This is the first time Saryatan has been presented to the American public. She's got to be a sympathetic character. Now, the dame in your play, Mr. Tussler, is not a sympathetic character, so we've got to make Tarn more sympathetic. Mr. Brandt, may I point out that the girl is not supposed to be particularly sympathetic? The whole play happens to be based on the premise that it takes uh, Just leave people... everything to me, Tussler. Now, here's this girl of yours. Yes, she is. She lived all her life on an island off the African coast. Africa? Africa. Gee, Chief. Africa. Are you by any chance referring to my play, Sinners in uh, Asylum, Certainly, Mr. Tussler. Your play. Now, this here girl has never known a mother's love, and her old man was killed with her mother when she was a baby. The only love she has known is from animals and the kindly natives of the village. So she is naive. But on the inside, there is a roaring volcano. Her mother's Spanish blood. I get what you mean, Chief. I get it. Now, good, Skinner. Now, here in this primitive background, uh, Faye, I'll let you have some camera angles, but no 57 takes. I don't need a 57 takes. No, what's good. I've got an instinct for this kind of thing. You bet you have, uh, Chief. Thanks, Roy. Now, uh... Uh, say, Chief, maybe we could save some dough by picking up some stock shots from bringing back alive. Uh, huh? Thanks, Roy. Uh, hey, what do you mean, stock shots? This is a major super film, but... Uh, but on the other hand, that might not be a bad idea. See what you can pick up, Roy. Listen, Brand, I'm worried. I don't see where Sayatan has the fire for this role. Hey, I'll see to it that she gives you plenty of fire. Boy, I can just see her when all the Spanish in her breaks loose. Like an animal, she scratches back when she comes face to face with an artificial civilization. She's got to be tamed. She's a wild thing with, a, with bars around her. She's caged, caged. Say, wait a minute. What a title. Lady in a Cage. Gosh, what a title. Thanks, Roy. Lady in a Cage. Yeah, her great, ain't it? Yes, sold yes, for well. old man's gold. Uh, what's the matter, Tussler? Oh, nothing. Go right ahead. Tussler, I'm beginning to wonder. Boss! You really have... I just thought of an angle on the love interest that's yeah? terrific. Yeah? Listen. You have a dame living on the outpost of civilization. Yeah. She's beautiful. Yeah. She's luscious. She's primeval. Yeah. 
She's everything to drive a man crazy. Absolutely. Now, this is my idea. There's a shipwreck, and her own power shipwreck is washed up on the shore. Die. Have you got this down? He wakes up to find this gorgeous creature looking down at him. There's a passion flower in her hair. That's symbolic. He stares at her. She runs away, frightened. He follows. Gentlemen, may I point out for the last time that that was not my idea when I wrote... Uh, just a minute, a... Mr. Tussler, and you too, Faye. This girl wouldn't run away. She wouldn't be afraid. Now, remember, she may be naive, but inside her is this flame, this Spanish blood. Oh, I still think she'd run away. Faye, Faye, why should we argue about female psychology when the man who wrote the play is right here in this room? Let's ask Tussler what she would do. Now, Tussler, listen to Mr. Faye carefully. Yes, sir. It's, uh... It's moonlight, Tussler. Got that? We have a long shot of the jungle and the jungle moon hanging low. Into the camera comes Saryatan, chanting a native love song. That's very good. The camera follows her as she dances into the waves. Suddenly she sees something. Stops. The camera follows her, and in a beautiful two-shot we see Saryatan looking down at Tyrone Power's face. Terrific. He opens his eyes. Blindly he raises up his hand and touches her. Got that, Tussler? I've got it. She's warm, alive. He leaps to his feet. Good. Mind you, Tyrone Power is the first white man Tarn has ever seen. All the dormant woman in her comes to life. He makes a grab for her. Now, Tussler, if you were that girl, if you were there on that tropical beach with Tyrone Power, what would you do? Well, I'll Now, remember, tell you, she's Spanish. Yes, I'm the remembering first white that. man. Tyrone Power? Yes, I'll tell you. Go on, go on. Uh, I feel this way. I, in a situation of that kind, I, I'm not sure the public has been quite... You see, educated. what did I tell you? That proves my point. Well, boys, that's enough for today. We've gone a long way on Tusk. It's been great having you here. You were invaluable. And now I've got to get home. My wife's going to have a baby. Uh, nurse, where's Mr. Brand? I'm Miss Lawrence. Yes, Miss Lawrence. We've been expecting you. Uh, come this way, please. Oh, Mr. Brand, what are you doing in the hospital? What's happened? Why, come what... in, come in, Madge. What's happened? Baby's due any minute now. That's what's happened. Oh. Why didn't somebody tell me having a baby was like this? Sit down, sit down, Madge. Here, yeah. my hand. Hold it. Oh. Nurse, get me another sedative and send me the chief of staff. I'm getting weak. Yes. Madge, what are you doing here? You sent for me, Mr. Brown. Oh, yes. We've got to get to work. Get me the wardrobe department. Call off my luncheon appointment. Yes, Sorry, your time. Get me Cohan long distance. Find yes, a room Mr. where I can Brand. work. Find a room where you can Hello. work. Get a room where Tussin and Skinner can work. I want him here. Get the art uh, department here with sketches and see if Palmer's here and Faye and Roy and Corcoran and Beck and Maloney. And uh, who's that? Would you put it down there? Hey, doctor, the floors out there in the hall are too slippery. Why don't you have carpets? What if a nurse fell out there while carrying an infant? Hospitals must be antiseptic, Mr. Brown. Doctor, I think you ought to do something drastic about that. Here's your pill, Mr. Brown. Now eat your breakfast. Eggs. I can't eat that stuff. Take it away. Call the brown derby and have him sent up a mushroom omelet. Remember to tell him it's for brand. Yes, Mr. Brand. Who's that? Come in. Some gentleman. Yes, what is Mr. it? Brand. Show him in. All show right, show them in. You can come in. Come in, boys. Come on uh, in. Come on. Hello, boys. Yeah, hello. What happened? Anything? Oh, not a thing, Roy. Not a thing. Not a thing. Rolly's here with the costumes, boss, and the property department's brought over a few items to be approved for the voodoo scene. Send them in. Scene. Send them all in. Okay, boss. Now, sit down, boys. Make yourself at home. Thanks, boss. You sure look comfortable there, boss. Yes. Do you think you'll pull through, Mr. Brown? Now, what's the matter with you fellows? Can't a guy go to the hospital for a day without a lot of cheap wisecracks? If I drop dead, would I get any sympathy? No. All you'd say is poor brand. It's too bad to work so hard. Gee, boss, the studio would go to pieces without you. Oh, thanks, Roy. Uh, all right, Raleigh, let's see those sketches. Hey, boss. I don't like them. Do them over. Badge, telephone the fifth floor and see how Mrs. Brand is. This jungle set? Yes. I don't like it. Do it over. That scene's was shot this morning. I still don't like it. Uh, how long you think you'll be tied up in the hospital, boss? Well, I tell you, Roy, you can't tell about these things, Roy. I ought to stay around for Mrs. Brand's sake at such a time. Mm -hmm. Besides, it's nice and quiet here. Maybe we can get some script written. Hey, Roy, get the name of that nurse who just passed by. Okay, Chief. Good type for pictures. Now then, boys, how's my script coming? Well, we're all set to go into dialogue. We've broken down the storyline. They've broken down the storyline. Excuse me, Tussler. Palmer, have you written the announcements for the baby yet? How about this, boss? A blank was born this morning to Mrs. Selma Brand, wife of the eminent producer Sidney Brand of Superfilm. That's good. Mother and child are reported resting nicely at the Vista Memorial Hospital yeah, in yeah, Hollywood. Yeah, yeah. Though in the midst of an important production, Lady in a Cage, right. which will launch Sayatan, the new foreign import, Mr. Brand has taken a suite at the hospital uh, to be with his little Jim, family. Jim, listen. Huh? Couldn't we get a little more human interest in there? Maybe about the weight of the baby, things like that. You know, people like to read human items about famous people, and it gives Hollywood a 
good name, Ruth. Well, you sure, know. boss, I can, but uh, hadn't we so, better Roy? wait until we know exactly what happens? It might be twins. Think of the human interest you can get out of twins. How's it go, Jim? Let's hear it again. A blank was born this morning to Mrs. Selma Brand, wife of the eminent producer, Sidney Brand of Superfans. Yeah, uh, take that man. Mother and child are reported resting yeah. nicely yeah. at yeah. the Memorial yeah. Hospital in Yes, yeah. yes. One no, in the what is it? Uh, Mr. Palmer, lady. please, I uh, beg your pardon. Just uh, a moment. Uh, oh, Mr. Brand. Yes? Uh, uh, it's the studio. There's a wire from New York, from Leland Hayward. What does he want? He says he understands it's a boy. Check that report. Go on, Palmer. A blank was born this morning. Oh, Mr. Brand. Yeah. To Mrs. Selma Brand, a super... Uh, Miss Sawyer Tarn yeah. is uh, downstairs. Sawyer Tarn? Yes, she wants to see you. Sawyer Tarn? She says if she doesn't see you, she'll scream the place down. My gosh, can't a man have a baby in peace? What'll I tell her? Send her up, send her up. Uh, boys, that'll be all for today. Uh, uh, Palmer, you'd better stay here and work on that announcement. Okay, uh, boss. Goodbye, uh, goodbye fellas. Uh, uh, Tussler, you, Tussler. Yes, Mr. Brown. I've got an idea for you for a play. Uh, remind me to tell you about it sometime. It's terrific. I can hardly wait. Thank you. Uh, Madge. Uh, yes, Mr. Brown. I don't want to be disturbed, I understand. Yes, Mr. Yeah. Brown. All right. Uh, come in, Miss Tom. Mr. Brown's expecting you. Sydney. Oh, hello, sorry, yeah? Dear Sydney. Uh, dear, sorry, yeah. Sorry, yeah. I'm not well, dear Sydney. Not well at all. I'm trees, so trees. Why, well, Sonia, that's too bad. I'm sorry. I'm worried, Sidney, about this picture I'm making for you. Well, I'm worried, Sonia. Oh, for heaven's sake, what's the matter? I'm so worried, Sidney, dear. I cannot sleep anymore because of this worry. Sidney, dear, where is my leading man? Oh, now then, Sonia, how many times must I tell you? I'm getting Tyrone power for you. Tyrone power. What more do you want? But, Sidney, I've read in the papers that you can't get Tyrone Power. Yes, Sire, do you believe what you read in the papers, Sire? You have the thing to worry about. I've got Tyrone Power eating out of the palm of my hand. I assure you, Sire, that everything will be all right. Reassure me, dear Sidney. All right. I reassure you, Sire. Then I shan't worry anymore. Oh, dear Sidney. <laughs> no, dear Sire. Uh, you mustn't worry anymore. Goodbye, dear Sidney. Goodbye, dear Sire. Uh... Oh, Mr. Brand, Mr. Madge, Brand. have you got your book? But, Mr. Brand... I'll take a letter. Yes, Mr. Brand. Mr. George Ogle, the Laos, Zeus, Modern Studios, Hollywood. Dear George, regarding Tyrone Power, I'm not only disappointed, I am hurt. I can't believe that you would let me down the way you have. I don't like the idea of playing on our friendship, but you know that if you were in a spot and asked me to help you out, I'd do it. You know I would. And last night I was talking over my problem with my wife, and it is her distinct recollection that you committed Tyrone Power to me. So I have a witness... Let me hear from you. Sincerely, regard Sidney Brand. Uh, Mr. Brand. I'll take a while in New York office. Yes, Mr. Brand, Super but... Films, New York City, prospects of Tyrone Power still alive. However, don't trust those rats at Zeus Modern to do the right thing. Stop. Want you to line up possible substitutes. Suggest you make screen tests of all available young leading men in New York. Scene from play, preferably love scene. Guys, immediately, even possibly becomes really exciting. Regards, Brand. Get it? Palmer, let's hear that announcement. A blank was born this morning to Mr. and Mrs. Mr. Brand. Yes, oh, Mr. Brand. Yes, what is it? Leland Hayward was right, Mr. Brand. It is a boy. A blank was uh, born wake this morning. Wake up, Palmer. It's a boy. A boy was born this morning to Mrs. Selma Brand, wife of the eminent producer. Sidney Brand of Super Films. Get him quiet. Yes, Mr. Payne. Quiet! Well, Mr. Brand, here we go. Ready to shoot. Boys, this occasion is, is a great occasion. Right, Tussler? Quite an occasion. All, All right. right, let's make it. All set, Larry? Ready to go, Mr. Payne. Ready, wind? Okay. Lights. Lights! Lights! Stand out, hammering! Turn him over. Rolling. Up to speed. Lady in a cage, scene one. Director Fay, camera Mara, take one. Where's Tarn? Why doesn't Tarn come through that door? Where the blazes is Tarn? All right, cut. Cut! Cut! Sterilize! Sterilize! All right, <laughs> Where is Miss Tarn? Here she is in the bedroom with that she's asleep. Maybe she's tired. Can I wake her, Mr. Payne? She should sleep on her own time. The money I pay her, wake her up. I'll wake her. Miss Tarn. Miss Tarn. Yes, Mr. Fay? Miss Tarn. 
Will you please cooperate? Cooperate? Now, Miss Town, we will take this scene again. What scene, Mr. Fay? The storm scene, Miss Town. Your great scene. Now, listen, Miss Town. In this scene, you are standing at the window, you understand? Gazing out over the ocean. You are waiting for your dream lover. You are longing for him. And who is going to play my dream lover? We're doing our best to get her own power, Miss Town. Ah, but you are not sure. Well, if we don't get him, Miss Town, we'll get somebody else. But how can I long for a man when I don't know who he is? If I knew who he was, I'm sure I could long much better. Miss Tarn, what difference does it make the, who the man... The man does not appear in the scene. Do you understand? He does not appear. Nobody appears in the scene except you, Miss Tarn. For years, Mr. Fay, I worked in Europe with the greatest directors. Kripovsky, Weihnachten, Klump. Yes, I, I, I believe you. I believe you, Miss Tarn. Now come over here and we'll take it again. You come in through the door. You go to the window. You gaze out over the ocean. There is yearning in your eyes. <laughs> You're waiting for your dream lover. You long for him. You are alone in your hut. Suddenly, you hear the door open behind you. You turn, and you see an arm coming through the crack of the door. A hairy arm. You scream. And then? Uh, never mind, Miss Todd. We'll explain that in the next scene. Now then, are you ready? I suppose so. All right, get him quiet. All right, Mr. Craig. Quiet, quiet, quiet. Quiet! quiet. Very tactfully, eh, Tussler? How's that? I beg Oh, yes, yes, very tactfully, very... I, as a matter of fact, I was afraid for... All right, for quiet, a... please. This will take. Right. Ready, Wayne? Okay. Turn him over. Rolling. Up to speed. Lady in a cage, scene one. Direct the fake camera, Mara, take two. Well, she's there all right this time, isn't she? Yeah. Here she comes now. Good. When she gets to the window, give the signal for the door to open. Now. Now the arm. There. Good. Now she turns and sees it. She turns and sees it. We're picking up on she sound, turns. Mr. Fay. All right, start it over. Quiet! You want to cut? No, keep it rolling. All right. Scream! Ah, uh, cut. Okay, Miss Tom. Okay. Cut. Cut! Stay alive. Okay, Miss Tom, you can rest now. Well, Mr. Brand, how did you like it? Faye, it was magnificent. That's all I can say, Faye. You know, on the stage, Mr. Tussler, on the stage, you couldn't possibly do a scene like this. Not possibly, Mr. Brand. You are listening to the Campbell Playhouse presentation of I Lost My Girlish Laughter. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. This is Ernest Chappell welcoming you back to the Campbell Playhouse. In just a moment, we'll return you to Orson Welles, George S. Kaufman, Ilka Chase, and Tamara Jeeva in I Lost My Girlish Laughter. But first, a question. What do you get hungry for when the January weather turns cold and you come home shivering all through? I call it soup weather. It's time for warming, comforting platefuls of the best-liked soup of all, Campbell's tomato soup. If ever its bright color and its savory steam were inviting, it's on days like these. The rich, racy taste of your first spoonful seems to hit the spot, and by the time your plate is empty, Campbell's tomato soup has revived you and fortified you. No other soup in all the world has quite the keen, lively flavor that this one has. No other soup is such a worldwide favorite. Especially right now, Campbell's tomato soup is a wholesome, sustaining dish to have often. Enjoy it for lunch or supper or as a first course for family dinner. And serve it sometimes as cream of tomato, adding milk instead of water. Cold days are soup days. Time for Campbell's tomato soup. And now, back to the Campbell Playhouse. Well, 
Hello, Mr. Brandt's office. One moment, please. Mr. Brandt. Yeah, who is it? Leland Haywood calling you. Oh, all right, I'll take it. Hello, Leland. How are you? Yeah, it feels great. What's on your mind, Leland? Oh, uh, what's that? Oh, Bruce Sanders? Uh, who's he? Now, listen, Haywood, I'm up to your tricks. Sanders hasn't got an agent. This is just one time you won't be able to horn in on a good thing. Uh, what? I don't know. The New York office may have offered him 300. I was. What? Sure, I read the papers. What? What's that? What? 1,500. 15. Don't make me laugh. Ha, ha. Who told you I needed him bad? Anyway. I tell you, Anders is dealing direct with our New York office. He's going to sign with us. But, uh, hello. Hello. Leela. Leela. So now he has to hang up on me. Madge. Yes, Mr. Brown. Take a wire. Superfilms, New York. Leland Haywood advises he is agent for Anders. Is this true? Stop. He refuses terms offered, and I don't dare repeat the price he wants. It'll make you sick. Stop. Don't let Haywood talk you into anything. Stop. Why did it have to be Haywood? Aren't there any other agents in the business? Stop. Regard Sydney. They are having plenty of grief at the theater guild, trying to replace Bruce Anders, who has been signed by Sidney Brand to play opposite Talia Tan in Sinners in Asylum, now called Lady in the Cage. Salary is said to be 1500 weekly. And we can believe this because Anders' agent is none other than Leland Hayward. Madge. Yes, Mr. Brand? Madge. Farmer out there and Skinner. Yes, sir. And Tussler. Yes, Mr. Brand. Send him in. You come in, too. Yes, Mr. Brand. Gentlemen, the master will confer with you. It goes without saying it's important. He wants me, too. He always does. After you, gentlemen. Now, boys, I want you all to hear this. Take a seat. Matt, take it down. Gentlemen, we've just signed Bruce Anders. Now, we've got to have a new angle on this Bruce Anders. Bruce Anders? When does he get here? On, on the, the noon plane. Roy's meeting him. Royal welcome. Photographers, reporters, all around. Good, good. Now, then, why shouldn't we build up a new type leading man? For 1500 a week, we should do something with him. Leland Hayward, that rub. Well, I was talking to my wife at dinner last night about the cycles of movie heroes. Now, Selma's very intelligent about such historical matters. She has a fine memory, too. And once she sees a face, she never forgets it. You know what I mean? She... I can't even remember names. I... Uh, what were we talking about, anyway? Cycles, Mr. Brand. Uh, cycles. Cycles of movie heroes. Oh, you know, right, first yeah. came the Latin type and Spanish shawls, then the fresh guy who slapped the girl down, then the whimsy boys, the screwball boys. Did I get that far? Those were your very words. And uh, now we've reached the tail end of the cycle. Of course, you'll say the thing to do is start all over again at the beginning, but that's obvious. No, a new vogue of leading man must be created, a new type. I see, Mr. Brand. Any particular type in mind? There's something in what you say, Tustin. Now, yes, it must be a particular type. What women want today is the romantic, gallant, uh, gentle, uh, passionate, uh, but man. Manly, manly, what women want today is Bruce Sanders. Hello, Mr. Brand's secretary. One moment, please. Mr. Ogle at Zeus Modern calling, Mr. Brand. I'll take it, yeah. What is it? Now, look here, Ogle. I've had just about enough double-crossing out of you. What? Yeah? Oh. You mean it? You really mean it? Georgie. Oh, Georgie, I knew I could count on you. What a friend, Georgie. What a... Oh. What a friend. What is it, boss? What's happened? Boys... We've got Tyrone Power. Tyrone Power? Madge, get back in the legal department to draw up contracts immediately before they change their minds. Jim, give me an exclusive of the transcript, but hold him off a few days. Madge, telephone Saya, she'll be dizzy with joy. Now we're going to have a picture. But what about Bruce Anders, Mr. Brand? Yeah, what about the romantic cycle? Uh... Oh, uh, I forgot all about Anders. What do we do? I'm going to get rid of him. Yeah, he'll be here any minute now. No, we'll do something. Stop him. Palmer, you've got to keep Anders' picture out of the papers. I don't want a word about him printed, and I want to see him, and I don't want to hear from him. We've got to get rid of him somehow. Oh, gee, Mr. Brand, isn't that kind of tough? Oh, I know. We give him the doghouse. We'll make it so unpleasant for him. He'll break his own contrast. We'll make, a, we'll make a test of him that'll frighten his own mother. He may be a romantic gallant, but it's strictly a raw deal. All right, Tussler. All right. Can I help it? This business is full of heartaches, and I've got to show profits. Now, get busy, everybody. Okay, get busy. Yes, sir. And Madge. Yes, Madge. Mr. Brand. Get my wife on the phone. I've, I've got to tell her the good news. This will make the day for Selma. Yes, Mr. Brown. Can you imagine that? We got a power. Come on, Farmer. Phew. Well, it may make the day for Selma, but what about Bruce Sanders? He's a friend of yours, isn't he? Yeah. You know, sometimes I wonder how men like Brand can sleep at night. Boy, he sure got the stuff. Ought to knock him for a loop. Who? Who are you talking about, Roy? That leading man the boss hired from New York. He's the nuts. Who's the nuts? Bruce Sanders. He arrived. He's right outside. Boy, can the boss pick him. Yeah, well, calm down, Roy. Anders won't need that build-up now. Oh, what do you mean? There's been a slight change of plan, Roy. Yeah? Yeah, we've got Tyrone Power. Tyrone Power? Oh, boy, can the boss pick him. Hey, Madge. 
What are we going to do with Anders? What would you do with him, Roy? Well, gee, I don't know. Now that we've got Tryon power. Uh, send Mr. Anders in, Roy. Sure thing, Madge. Oh, well, Mr. Anders, will you step in here, please? Thank you. So long, Madge. Hello, Anders. How are you? Why, Mr. Tesla. Hello. Nice to see you. How's your picture coming along? Uh, surprisingly. Oh, uh, this Miss Lawrence, Mr. Anders, she's almost human. <laughs> I'm sure she is. <laughs> How do you do, Mr. Anders? I suppose I ought to say hello to Mr. Brand. Oh, uh, well, Mr. Anders, I, um, I'm afraid I must apologize for Mr. Brand. Uh, he's out of town today, but uh, he left word for us to do anything we could for you to, uh, well, to help you get settled and, uh, well, uh, we, uh, well, oh, the, the car's here to take you to your hotel. Ah, well, how nice everybody is, aren't they, Mr. Tussler? Yes, everybody's just wonderful, Anders. Um, have you ever been out here before, Mr. Anders? Oh, I haven't. You know, I've always been kind of scared and suspicious about Hollywood. But, you know, back in New York, we think Mr. Brand's the only man out here with vision and integrity. Don't we, Mr. Tussler? Hmm, you took the words right out of my mouth. Well, you'll let me know what happens to me next, won't you, Miss Lawrence? Oh, Mr. Brand will tell you very soon, I'm sure, Mr. Anders. Yes, something tells me I'm about to beat Mr. Brand to it, Miss Lawrence. Uh, what would you say to a little lunch, Anders? I'd say swell. Oh, Mr. Tussler, I, uh, I don't think I would if I were you. Don't give it another thought, Miss Lawrence. Uh, by the way, uh, you don't know anything about this lunch, don't forget. Me? I haven't heard a word, Mr. Tussler. Ah, I knew you were that kind of girl. Come along, Anders. Flash! Leland Hayward, socialite actors manager and amateur aviator, took off from Roosevelt Field, New York, at 2 a.m. today in his own plane in an attempt to break the existing cross-country record. He is expected in Hollywood sometime this morning. And Mr. Brand left orders not to be disturbed. Oh, asleep? Mr. Brand's been in his office all morning following Leland Hayward's flight on the radio. He's bet everybody around here that he'd break the record. Well, he won. I did. Oh, good heavens. Are you Mr. Hayward? I am. Oh, well, uh, just a minute, Mr. Hayward. Oh, don't bother to announce me. I want to surprise old Sidney. He'll be surprised, all right. Oh, hello, Sidney. How are you? How's the baby? I broke the record. I want a drink. Well, say, by the way, what the deuce do you think you're trying to pull off with Andy? Oh, uh, 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 that was a great flight, Leland, a great flight. I was betting on you all the way, Leland. Uh, say, but I haven't much time, Sidney. Yeah, what's wrong, Leland? Oh, it's a mere trifle, Sidney, just a misunderstanding, I'm sure. I hear you're planning to put power in Andrew's part after all. Now, look here, Leland. Oh, I'm not quarreling about power, but why do you have to put Andrew's on the spot? He I'm gives not... up a Broadway success to come out here, and you're trying to get him to break his contract. Just... So what? The picture business will think he flopped and I can't sell him. Now, Sidney, is that kind? I'm a businessman, Leland, not a humanitarian. In this case, Sidney, you're going to be a humanitarian and like it. I don't know how carefully you read Anders' contract, Sidney. In case your mind isn't fresh on the thing, let me recall to you Clause C, Section B. And Bruce Anders' full recompense shall be the salary specified and the prestige of playing the leading role in said Sidney brand production. You get it, Sidney? The salary and the privilege of playing the leading role. Get it? What have I got a legal department for? To improve your golf game, no doubt. Well, it's been pleasant seeing you, Sidney. Give my regards to Selma and the baby. I got an opening in New York tonight. Goodbye, Sidney. Madge! Madge! Yes, Mr. Brown. Get Ogle at Zeus Modern. Yes, Mr. Brown. What'll I tell him? Tell him I wouldn't have wanted Tyrone Power in the first place. Hello! <laughs> All right, save it. That's fine. Okay, Mr. Payne. All right, save it. All right, save it. Quiet. 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 Now, Miss Town. Miss Town. You called, Mr. Payne? Yeah. We're ready to take the beach scene now. Uh, you got it all straight? I think so, Mr. Payne. I come up the beach. Uh, no, here you don't. And, uh, you come down from the jungle over there. The drums are beating, throbbing in your blood. Quiet. You're happy as the day is long. You try not to stumble over the mangrove roots. Quiet! On the beach, you see this man. That's Mr. Anders. Uh, Mr. Anders, Miss Tarn. Uh, we've met before. How did you? He's the first white man you've ever seen in your life. He's lying there. You see him. You stop. You take a step towards him. He moves. He reaches up. You scream. He opens his eyes. He says, where am I? 
You say, who are you? He says, I'm Leith Hutchison of Virginia. Then you say, my name Tahine. He says, Tahine, you are beautiful. You say, white man, uh, no. White man, I li like you. You stay many moon with Tahine? No. You get it? Yes. Well, then we do the rest in close-up. All right, let's make it. Miss Tart on the set, please. Mr. Anders, will you get down there on the beach? Yes, Mr. Fay. All ready, Mr. Fay. All right, how about you, sound effects? What Wind, waves, all that stuff. You ready with that? Yes, Mr. Fay. You fellows back there in the jungle, give me something. Give me all you've got. You're savages, savages. Do you hear? Savages? Okay, Mr. Fay. All right, let's make it. Quiet! Quiet! Turn him over. Rolling. Up to speed. Lady in a cage. Jungle scene. Tarn and Anders. Fade director. Merit camera. Take one. Oh. Ah. Where am I? Who are you? I'm Leith Hutchinson of Virginia. My name is Tahini. Tahini, you all are beautiful. White man, I like you. You stay many moons, many moons with Tahini. Hmm? All right, cut! Cut! Save the life! Save her! Miss Todd! Yes? We're going to make it again. Again? Yes, again and again and again and again! Until you get it right. Mr. Fay, you will not speak to me this way. It's not my fault that Mr. Anders cannot act. Anders can't act! Yes, 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 yes. yes. And you can't direct. Now listen, Tom. I've been taking this from you for weeks. You have been taking? In Europe, I worked with the greatest directors. Real artists. Krapowski, Schneiderman, Klumpf. Oh, not for a minute longer will I work on this set. I shall go now to Mr. Sidney Brand. And to Mr. Sidney Brand, I shall say... Dear Sydney. Uh, yes, sire? Sydney, I will not work in your picture for one minute longer. Oh, now, why, sire? What's the trouble? Sydney, it's impossible. I'm an artist, and your director is a butcher. Oh, now, wait a minute, sire. They... The leading man you gave me is a sack of potatoes. The electrician. Well, they will not like me. The hairdresser is now, insolent. Sire, sire. It is a conspiracy again. Sire, please. The picture's more than half shot, sire. Oh, I don't care how much is shot. It's your picture. Rather than work under such conditions, well, I, I, I'll kill myself. No, sire, now don't do that, sire. I... I'm an artist. I know. In Europe, I work with the greatest directors. I know you have, Real sire. Real artists, Klum, I know. Schneiderman, and, and I... I'll have Faye down here, sir. I'll, I'll make him apologize, the sir, yeah? butcher. I know. it. Uh, I'll fire him. That's what I'll do. I'll fire him. Who does he think he is? I'll show him who's boss around here. Now, sir, you please. For my sake, sir, you, will you finish this picture, sir? Dear Sidney. Yeah, sir. Sidney, you're so good to me. Sir, you're, you're tired. That's what it is, sir. And when this picture's over, you must go away and have a nice rest. To go away, dear Sidney? But it's so tree. I know. So lonely. I'll, I'll find... Uh, we'll get somebody to go with you, and maybe I'll go along myself. Sorry, will you finish the picture? Dear Sidney, you're so kind. So sympathetic. Well, that's settled then, that's settled. You go back on the picture. Yes, I'll go back. Oh, dear Sidney, for you, I'll go back. <laughs> To all department heads from Sidney Brand, subject Lady in a Cage, this is to advise you that Lady in a Cage, formerly Sinners in Asylum, goes back for retakes. An unfortunate audience reaction at the sneak preview makes revisions imperative. These things sometimes happen. P.S. Sayatan is awful. To Fred Cook from Sidney Brand, subject Lady in a Cage. Lineup list of all top notch writers in Hollywood whom I can hire or borrow to do and to rewrite Sinners. We're making drastic story changes, throwing emphasis to Bruce Anders, and retitling the picture, That Gentleman from the South. That Gentleman from the South is the title. P.S. Bruce Anders is terrific. To Jim Palmer, from Sidney Brand, subject, Bruce Anders. You are hereby ordered to spare no expense or cunning in persuading the newspapers that the only important news personality of the day is Bruce Anders. If anyone asks you questions about Sarya Tan, you don't know who she is. You might also release the news that Faye will direct. 
He has been re-engaged at Super at a terrific boost in money. There's no time to lose. Match! Match! Match isn't here, boss. Hey, boss! Where is she? I don't know, boss. Oh, Mr. Brand. Yes, what is it? Mr. Palmer's out here to see oh, you. Send him in, send him in. Yes, Mr. Brand. Come in, Palmer. Well, what's the matter, Mr. Brand? What's the matter? You ask me what's the matter. Here I've got one of the ranking stars in the industry. Bruce Hand is a new type of romantic gallant. The biggest thing since Valentino. What do I find? I've got no writers. What do I pay a scenario department? For what do I pay a New York office? And for that Mr. matter... Mr. Brand. For... Yes, Palmer, what is it? Mr. Brand, I've got an idea. It better be good. Mr. Brand, there's a writer employed by Superfilms who's drawing a salary and doing nothing. His name is Tussler, John Tussler. He's the author of a successful play for which you paid $200,000. You may remember it. Sinners in Asylum, otherwise known as Lady in a Cage, yeah. otherwise known as that gentleman from the South. Sure. Now, isn't it just possible that Mr. Tussler may be of some assistance to you in your present predicament? You know, that's not a bad idea at all, not at all. Not, uh, where's that script? You know, the one the red cover, the one that's under the telephone. It's, it's yeah. uh, still there. Yeah, it's right. quite a play. It's quite a play. There it is, right on the phone. Hey, uh, Roy. Yes, boss? Get Tussler on the phone right away. Tussler? Hey, boss, don't you remember? You released Tussler from his contract last night. He left this morning on the chief. He left. I'll get him back right away. Call him up. Uh, send him a wire on the train right away. Quick. John Tusser, Chief, Oro, Chicago. Just read your play. Stop. I like it and I understand it. Stop. On your return, we'll have new contracts. Stop. Take plane. Regard. Sign. Sidney Brand. Sidney Brand. Super Films, Hollywood, California. Collect. Don't jest with me. Stop. I know you can't read. Sign Tussler. John Tussler, Chief, Oro, Chicago. I am hurt. You left without consoling me. Stop. Return immediately. Stop. Your presence absolutely necessary. Stop. Regard. Sign Sidney Brand. Sidney Brand, Super Films, Hollywood. Collect. I am sorry I hurt you. Stop. It seems all things are possible, even that. I will not come back. Stop. I will not come back. Stop. I will never come back. Affectionately. Signed, John Tussler. John Tussler, Chief Horror of Chicago, you're missing the opportunity of a lifetime. Stop. I'll give you sole screen credit. Stop. No man could ask for more. Stop. Take plane to Kansas City. Stop. Expect you regard signed Sidney Brand. Sidney Brand, Super Films Hollywood. Collect. I am the happiest man in the world. Stop. There is a lovely lady just opposite me. She hates pictures. Stop. And you offer me a sole screen credit. Well, well. Sign Tussler. John Tussler on board the chief. I give you one more chance. Stop. Either you return immediately or I blacklist you in Hollywood. Stop. Which means you'll never be able to have another job here. Stop. What do you think? Question mark. Sign Sidney Brand. Sidney Brand, Super Films Hollywood. Still collect. What do I think? Stop. Who told you I could think? Stop. You never thought of that yourself, but if you must know what I think, I'll be glad to tell you, and it won't cost you a penny. Stop. Boo! Exclamation mark. I think you're a nasty man. Signed, Tussler. P.S. The name of the lady just opposite is Madge Tussler. Nay, Madge Lawrence. We were married last night. Signed, John Tussler. <laughs> And gentlemen, we're speaking to you from the foyer of the Cafe Circle Theater in Hollywood, California, where the world premiere of the super film production, That Gentleman from the South, will be seen by Hollywood's great and famous for the first time tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, the movie fans have turned out to watch the celebrities arrive, and as you can tell, excitement is very Good evening, Mr. Tussler. Nice to see you back in New York. Take your kilt, Mr. Tussler. Oh, how's anyone, Mr. Tussler? Hi, fine, fine. Uh, my wife come in yet? I haven't seen her, Jimmy. Have you seen Mrs. Tussler tonight? No, I haven't seen her yet, Mr. Tussler. Oh, uh, what time is it, Jimmy? It's 20 to 12, Mr. Tussler. 20 to 12. Say, do you mind if I turn on your radio, Jimmy? Something I want to catch. Uh, sure you can. It's the opening of what used to be a play about social conditions in the South. It was called Sinners in Asylum. To tell you a little about the great range in human emotions portrayed in this latest super film success, that gentleman from the South, ah, starring Bruce it. Anders and Sarya Tan. Tears, laughter, pathos, humor, sophistication, terror. Oh, why go on? Here you are, ma'am. Mrs. Tussle has just come in, sir. Oh, hello, Madge. I'm sorry I'm late, John. I had to go by the house. Here's a telegram. Leland Haywood sent it over. Oh, read it, will you, darling? The 
John Tussler, 34 East 61st Street, New York City. Starting our new picture, Superfilms offers $50,000 for John Tussler. Signed, Sidney Brown. Any answer, dear? You bet there's an answer. Take the wire, Mad. Mr. Sidney Brand, Hollywood, California. John Tussler offers $50,000 for Superfilms. Signed, John Tussler. Superfilms will not let you down in the future. Ladies and gentlemen, one and all, far and wide, I thank you. Thank you, Mr. Brand. You have just heard I Lost My Girlish Laughter, starring our producer, Wells, as the producer, Sidney Brand. And here he is, Orson Wells. Ladies and gentlemen, I've asked our announcer in his chapel to allow me to interrupt him for a moment to invite you to join George Kaufman, Ilka Chase, Tamara Jeva, and Jane Allen, the originator of tonight's story, in a somewhat peculiar little ceremony we are holding tonight in the latter's honor. You see, it's this way. Right now, all that any of us on the Campbell Playhouse know for certain about Jane Allen, the author of tonight's story, is that Jane Allen is not the author of tonight's story. Jane Allen is a phony. I mean, the name Jane Allen is a phony. The real name of the perpetrator of I Lost My Girlish Laughter is a well-kept secret with its publishers who have promised to present our authoress tonight and think they can do it without revealing her identity or his identity or their identity, whatever it may be. This is a good trick if Random House Incorporated can do it. But George Kaufman, Ilka Chase, Tamara Javen, myself think they can't. On just one minute, Jane Allen is actually going to pay us a visit. We calculate that between us we can expose her or him or them or it, and we'd like you to help. So consider yourself, please, for tonight, a full member of our special secret service, sworn to unmask all authors and authoresses to the last poison pen name, and stand by for orders. When talking about Campbell's tomato soup a while ago, I pointed out that it has a flavor people never seem to tire of. That is so. From the first taste, it wins you completely. And then as long as you know it, as many times as you have it, your pleasure in it continues. Perhaps it's the fresh taste of sun-ripened tomatoes or the table butter that enriches it or the delicacy of the seasoning. I think it's all of these that account for the always welcome flavor of Campbell's tomato soup. And I do urge you to have it often, as the mainstay of the day's lighter meal, as a pleasant start for dinner. And sometimes, too, have it as cream of tomato with milk added instead of water. But is it on your Saturday shopping list? Put it down, won't you? Campbell's tomato soup, several cans. And now... Here's Orson Welles. Yes, Ernest Chappell, but where is Jane Allen? Well, I'm sorry, Orson. I haven't the slightest idea. Ladies and gentlemen, I have every reason to believe that Mr. Chappell speaks the truth because, as I think I've already told you, nobody on this program has the slightest idea who the author of this story really is. We only know that I Lost My Girlish Laughter was credited on its title page to somebody who calls herself, or himself or themselves, Jane Allen. Well, I think I can tell you this much, Orson. In checking the channel to Columbia's private studio, we've heard Miss Allen on the microphone, and she is certainly a lady. Well, that's very nice of you, and it's very nice to hear. Let's see now. We know that our author is connected in some capacity with the motion picture industry, and perhaps, too, for even more interesting reasons, she has insisted on an absolutely all-around anonymity. And now we know something more about her. We know she isn't a man, and that's something. Secret agent H204, George Kaufman, reporting for service. Yes, H204. Orson, if Jane Allen is actually secreted someplace in the Columbia Broadcasting System, why can't we trace her just that way? Sorry, George, but the rules don't permit it. If we knew where Jane Allen was going to broadcast from, we could simply surround whatever place it is with inquisitive friends of ours, and the game would be up. Oh, all right. Secret operator Ilka Chase reporting for duty. And I have a theory. Yes, Operator Chase. My hunch is that this Allen woman is a collector of eccentric stories about Hollywood and that I Lost My Girlish Laughter is simply her collection. I agree. Very well, Inspector Tamara Java. And now I think it's about time that we put the whole thing squarely up to its originator. Commissioner Ernest Chappell, are you ready with Secret Studio X? Yes, Inspector, here we are. Are you ready, Miss Allen? Are you ready, Miss Allen? Ready for anything. Is your name uh, Jane Allen? Yes, Mr. Kaufman, for want of a better. Animal, vegetable, or mineral? If Inspector Kaufman will have the goodness to stop grilling our guest of honor, I'd like to preserve the anon- I mean the amenities and present her to you. Thank you, Orson Wells, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, now, Miss Allen, I'd uh, 
like to ask you a question. I must warn you that anything you say will be used by Inspectors Kaufman, Java, and Chase, besides your audience and myself, in our unrelenting efforts to unmask you. Miss Allen, how did you come to write, I Lost My Girlish Laughter? Because I got cheated out of a permanent. Uh, Commissioner Chappell, did you hear what I heard? Well, it sounded like the lady said she was cheated out of a permanent. Now, look here, Miss Allen. I've never been to Hollywood. I mean to Hollywood to make a picture. Could you please clarify that last statement in words of one syllable? Well, it seems that a writer came into our office. The boss was in conference. That would be Sidney Brand. The boss was in conference. So this writer approaches me at the desk. Do you know that's something he says to me? I ask him, do I know what? You're a rat caught in a trap, he says to me. Outside, the sun is shining, bright golden rays of sheer joy. And you sit here, chained to your desk. Well, to make a long story short, he sells me, and before I know it, he's parted me from the five dollars I have saved for a permanent. I see. Well, that just sort of got me to thinking about writers and about books. I thought how nice it would be to be a successful writer, to sell a couple of million copies, to sell the movie rights, the stage rights, the television rights, the submarine rights, to make a million dollars without having to punch a time clock every day to collect your salary. Miss Allen, uh, did you make a million dollars? How? No, I did not, Mr. Kaufman, but there are other compensations... Yes? Well, here am I, and there you are, and there's Orson Welles and Ilka Chase and Tamara Java. What I mean to say is you certainly meet some interesting people, even though you don't get to see them. And Miss Allen, did all those things you wrote about really happen to you? Miss Chase, I Lost My Girlish Laughter is a novel, and a novel is fiction. Oh, by the way, Miss Allen, I don't know why I'm asking this, but... Uh... Have you seen any good plays lately? Oh, yes, Mr. Kaufman. I saw the opening of your new play, The American Way, last week. You don't say. And may I say, it is one of the most moving and memorable um, evenings I've ever spent uh, in the Insp theater. Inspector Kaufman, can you tell me why you asked that last question? Elementary, my dear Wells. Elementary, the mere child's play of deduction. That proves to us that Jane Allen is in New York. Among other things. Now, tell me, Jane, if I may call you Jane, and I might just as well call you Jane as anything else, are you planning to write another book? I'm afraid I've exhausted Hollywood for the time being, and now I'm looking for a new field. Oh, good. And you know, Mr. Wells, I've always been curious about radio. And from what I can gather from this broadcast, it looks like a very unusual subject matter. <laughs> yes, Jane. Just what are you getting at? Mr. Wells, would you <laughs> care to hire a secretary? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Herman, for covering my confusion with a little music. And thank you, Jane Allen, whoever you are, wherever you are. It's been very nice meeting you, very nice telling your story, and very nice trying to find you out. My special operatives, Mr. Kaufman, Miss Java, Miss Chase, Mr. Chappell, will all write what they think your name is on a small slip of white paper, which I will immediately burn to a crisp. The whole thing has been very pleasant, and when you've written your next book, the book about radio and the wild men from Borneo who put on radio shows, please, Jane, let us put it into a radio show. Until then, the Campbell Playhouse, as always, remains obediently yours, and you, Miss Allen, I promise you, will remain shrouded in the deepest pseudonymity. And now, Ernest Chappell, would you please divulge the real names of the people who played with us tonight? I lost my girlish laughter. Well, to begin with, Orson Welles was Sidney Brand, George Kaufman was Tussler, Ilka Chase was Madge Lawrence, and Tamara Jeeva was Saria Tarn. Faye was played by Ray Collins, Palmer by Frank Reddick, Roy by Everett Sloan. Edgar Barrier played the part of Bruce Anders. Myron McCormick impersonated Leland Hayward. The part of Francis Smith was played by Agnes Moorhead, Raleigh by Joseph Cotton. William Allen was the assistant director, and the music for the Campbell Playhouse was conducted by Bernard Herman. And now, Orson, will you tell us about next week's story? Next week, the American nation observes the president's birthday by aiding him in his fight against infantile paralysis, by dancing so that others may walk. And next week, we bring you one of America's foremost actresses in a story by one of America's foremost authors, and a story that has been of immeasurable importance in bringing home to the American people the necessity for an organized fight against disease. Ladies and gentlemen, next week's broadcast will be an adaptation of Aerosmith by Sinclair Lewis, and our guest will be Helen Hayes. Until next Friday night, until Aerosmith, my sponsor, the makers of Campbell Soups, and all of us in the Campbell Playhouse remain obediently yours. The 
The makers of Campbell's Soups join Orson Welles in inviting you to be with us at the Campbell Playhouse next Friday evening to hear Aerosmith, starring Miss Helen Hayes. Meanwhile, if you have enjoyed tonight's Campbell Playhouse presentation, won't you tell your grocer so tomorrow when you order Campbell's tomato soup? This is Ernest Chappell saying thank you and good night. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System.